Hey everybody, what is up? This is Devin Lavore coming at you. <laughs> and today, well, this evening, video number two of the day, I really felt the Lord put this on my heart. And this could be another long video, it may not be. But really, I'm just going to go ahead and give you the gist of the video, then I'll get into some explanation, right? I really felt like the Lord put it on my heart that He is the God of miracles. And I felt like the Lord was just trying to share with me and impress on my heart that that, like, he himself is a miracle. He is a walking miracle. The very existence of who he is is just this supernatural, ongoing, eternal phenomenon that's never boring. See, and that is why religion is so bad. Because religion wants to come in and share with you and impress upon your heart how boring God is. No, it, God's not boring. Religion is boring. What Jesus came to say, show me one aspect of Jesus' ministry in any of the Gospels that was boring. It wasn't boring. What was Jesus' life marked by? It was marked by miracles. You know, the Old Testament is full of miracles. Full of miracles um you know during uh, the during the time where the new testament uh letters and things like that were written miracles happening constantly through the same spirit that created all things the holy spirit through the word creating all things that in and of itself is a miracle and even today in this day and age in my own life, in some of your lives, you've seen God do things that were completely impossible, that defy logic, that defy science, and what science says is possible, you know? I'm not against science. I love science. I like true science. True science is the discovery of what God has made and, and how awesome it is, you know? Man science is to take God out of the equation and make it all into facts and figures and all that. And it's like, no, sorry, God is real. But I'm not talking to that people today, <laughs> you know. And so I printed off, listen, I printed off a list. And I'm not going to read the whole list, obviously. But I printed off this list. is 125 miracles recorded in the Bible. And this is just a partial list. And this is a partial list, and this is the Bible, okay? Not... We're not even talking about all the different things that God has done that aren't even in the Bible, you know, to prove himself. The Bible is a great book. It's a great, it's God's, it's God's number one bestseller. <laughs> and it's a book that he, he created just to show you like, hey man, I am real. I've been around. I've always been around. No one created me. I am the uncreated God. And I just wanted to give you a little example of how I'm working you know, and it's like he's still working. He's still working today. You know, you you can see God in things that are like not biblical, meaning meaning things, events that are not found directly in the Bible, but are in history. And you can see God at work like, wow, that was that, that looks like God was at work there. But that's a whole nother video that I may never do. But <laughs> but I wanted to read some of these uh, miracles for you because I want you guys to be encouraged and I want your faith to be stirred in the fact that God is a miracle working God. So I guess I can start off with, I mean, I talked about creation. It says the flood here. Um, the confusion of languages I thought was a really cool one. That in and of itself is a miracle. That was the first, that was the day of anti-Pentecost. <laughs> where people started speaking in tongues and they didn't like it and they couldn't understand each other and they were like what was going on and god's like that's okay i'm gonna do that another time later and you will understand you will be prophesying and declaring the great things of god you know um how about sodom and gomorrah you know how about lot's wife being turned into a pillar of salt you know what i'm saying I mean, these are things, these are like supernatural, crazy things that no scientist today can tell you, oh, well, I know, I know exactly how that happened. Dude, she was instantly turned into a pillar of salt. And I'm sure there could be some sort of scientific explanation, but how do you explain God saying, step out of the way? And at the same time, he's speaking to the prophet saying, step out of the way, I'm getting ready to destroy this. At that very moment, 
hailstones of fire come from heaven and just destroy the entire place, you know? You know, let uh, uh, the uh, plagues of Egypt. Come on, we know all of those were just crazy, crazy miracles, right? How about the uh, Exodus? You know, how about the burning bush that led uh, Moses into the uh, Egypt to start his whole ministry? You know, Moses had a ministry of miracles. He was surrounded by, I think Jesus is the only one that beats Moses when it comes to miraculous life and seeing miraculous signs and wonders, you know, being led by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. I mean, come on, you know, now listen, I'm not, I'm not speaking to the unbeliever. I'm not speaking to the unbeliever. I'm talking to us who are believers to encourage us like, Hey, do you remember these things? These things were amazing. You know, how about, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, Aaron's rod being changed into a serpent. That kind of deal. The Red Sea divided. The Jordan divided twice. It was actually the, the Jordan River was divided twice, actually. God did that two times. Um, and there was just so many different things that God has done. You know, like the prophet, uh, what was it, Elijah or Elisha, who uh, had that floating axe head. A floating axe head, an axe head made of iron. He threw a, a rod. He broke off some branch from the tree, from a tree, threw it in the water, and it was almost like a trade. Here, I'll give you this branch. Okay, thank you. And here comes the axe head floating. I still don't understand that. Anybody got any revelation on that? Feel free to comment below because I don't understand why he had to take the branch off. He took the branch off of a tree and threw that in there. You know the Lord told him to do that, so I'm just like, what? Lord, yeah, Lord, give us some revelation on that one. <laughs> um, how about, uh, oh, here's a good one. Balaam's donkey. <laughs> Balaam's donkey starts talking. This is like, this is not fantasy. You know, again, I'm not speaking to the unbeliever or the atheist. or That's not the crowd. This, this video is not for you. You know, I'm talking to us. It's like, hello, the walls of Jericho. The walls of Jericho were so thick, they said that you could comfortably ride two chariots on top of the wall side by side. That's how thick those walls are. And they marched around it silently 13 times. And in the last time, with the trumpet and the shout of praise, that thing comes crumbling down. You're going to tell me that that's a miracle. That's a miracle. <laughs> um... What about the four lepers? That's a good one. The four lepers that were sitting outside the gate. They were like, we're going to die. We're just going and uh, present ourselves to these people, to the enemy. And if they kill us, they kill us. If not, we're going to die of starvation outside of this this uh, city. The city won't let us in. So it's like we're, we're, we're in trouble if we do and we're in trouble if we don't. And you know what I could have said there, don't you? Anyway... <laughs> And then they come and find that the, throughout the night, God sent a sound of war that caused the enemy to flee. I mean, this, I mean, this is, this is what we're talking about, guys. This is me trying to get you and myself to lift our heads up a little bit for a second from our now situation that's in our face to recognize, lift up our eyes and see the Lord. Oh, come and magnify the Lord with me. And this is one of the ways we can do it. We can look at all the things that God's done and be like, wow, what about Naaman? You know, the leper who wasn't even in covenant with God and <laughs> told him to dip in the Jordan seven times. And on the seventh time, bam, he's healed of his leprosy. Said he had newborn baby skin. You know what I mean? And resurrections. Resurrection is not a new thing for God. He's been doing it for a while. Even to this day. There's been resurrections I've heard of. Like back in the uh, the Todd Bentley. I mean, I know how that Lakewood revival or Lake whatever it was in Florida. I know how that thing went down and how it ended and bad. It was bad and all that. But you can't judge the whole thing based on how it ended and, and the mess that it became. God was moving like major. I mean, Todd Bentley was having conversations with angels and whatnot, you know. And so you can't judge the whole thing based on that. But, I mean, people were being raised from the dead during that revival, you know. And it's like, you know, these kind of things happen, you know. How about Elijah and, the, you know, on, the, uh, on Mount Carmel? 
I mean, uh, that's crazy. Fire comes down from heaven. It might have been lightning, but I mean, it consumed everything, even the rocks. And it's like, wow, that is a fire from God. That is not lightning. You know, if you want to try and explain it with man science, lightning is not going to do that. Lightning is not going to sap up everything, you know, and take it all away, just disappear, gone by. You know, I mean, this is who we're talking about here. You know, let us be encouraged, you guys. You know, how about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? <laughs> you know, I mean, here are two guys, or three guys, that were thrown into a fire, and the ones who threw them into the fire, they burned up even before they got to the door of the furnace. And how about healing? We talked about resurrection. How about healing? Healing and miraculous healing, instantaneous healing. That is not new with Jesus's ministry. You know what was great about Jesus's ministry is all the things that God had been doing sporadically in sparse moments throughout history, he was doing in like such ridiculous abundance right now in that present day that people were just blown away. That's what's getting ready to happen. I'm just, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not declaring it and prophesying it and decreeing, making a decree because that's what I want to see happen and I'm just going to decree it because I want to. No, I really feel by the Spirit, I just feel like that's what the Lord's saying, that's what's getting ready to happen. You know? I do. It's kind of scary to decree it, but it is. I just, I just think that's what's getting ready to happen. I was like, God's going to do that again. You know, he's going to just show up and just bless people like crazy. You know, how about Jonah surviving in the belly of a fish for three days? You know, I mean, there's just so many of these amazing little, oh yeah, Jesus feeding the 5,000, not including women and children. I mean, come on, man. Like, here, give me your five. I mean, that's seriously, that's like, give me your half bag of bread and your two, you know, breaded tilapia fillets from Costco. <laughs> and I'm going to feed 5,000 men and their families. See, that's, I think it's so important to say not including women and children. It's so true because it's like, that's, I mean, you're talking about like 25 to 30,000 people, you know, and it's like, dude, because it was a Hebrew culture. So they weren't about birth control and 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 trying to wait and all that stuff, man. They probably had large families, which to us nowadays is weird. You know, you got four kids. Are you did was was that a was that planned? It, yes, actually, the fourth one was actually planned by the Lord. <laughs> so, are you getting a a, a a clue here, guys? Are you getting some, you know, some faith? God has done. I would I would encourage you to look up. Look up these, uh, look up the miracles of God. Get on Google and type up list of biblical miracles. And you can just read them all yourself and you will see that, man, God has just done some amazing things. He is a miracle working God. You know, he does miracles all the time, every day. I guarantee you there's a miracle, there is a series of of miraculous things going on right now. But what we're asking the Lord for is for that to come to our life. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, come visit our lives with your miraculous hand of provision, your miraculous word to our hearts. You know, put us in the place that you want us to be in. Connect us with the people you want us to be in. You know, put us in the purpose that you want us to flow in and just... Come, Father, and anoint us, appoint us, clothe us with yourself, and put us into the miraculous state of being that you want us to walk in. So not only we will we receive miracles, but we will be a giver and a dispenser of miracles. You see what I'm saying? That's who we want to be. That's who God wants us to be. That's what it means to walk as Jesus walked. And miracles is just one aspect. You know, there's faith, there's healing, there's prophecy, there's teaching, there's preaching, there's all of it. All of that is kingdom work. That's how you live in the kingdom. That's how you walk and talk and live and breathe and move and have your being as a son and daughter of the kingdom is because you walk like Jesus, who is the king of the entire kingdom. And he's like, I want y'all all to be like me. I mean, what kind of king does that? 
what kind of king does that? What kind of king is like, no, you are, my, you are my subjects and you serve me. I am higher than you and you're down here. It's a lot of pastors, a lot of people in ministry. No, no, no. I'm up here. You're serving my thing. Oh my gosh. I'm going to tell you what. No joke. I know a lot of us just came out with a word talking about healing. I need healing from that big time. Because I know that there's some things in my heart that just like I, I'm really burned by that kind of church culture. And even being in ministry, you know, serving other people's thing. And people who will treat you like dirt. Treat you as one who aspires to be dirt one day. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like so many ministries just they suck you in and they wring you out of what you can give to them and then they toss you aside when you when you're done. And it's like, you know, Jesus, how opposite is Jesus? You know, Jesus is the kind of guy that he's like, I'm the king of this kingdom. Now, everybody who comes to me, I'm going to show you how to be like me. I'm going to show you all to be kings and priests and prophets <laughs> and apostles and teachers, whatever it is you God's called you to be. You know what I'm saying? But to be the full expression of everything that God wants you to be, that in and of itself will take a miracle. Because we're, God's going to have to break through all of our fears and our paradigms and our cultural this. You know what I'm saying? And so I just wanted to encourage you guys that God is a miracle working God. He does miracles every day, all the time. He is not stopping because that is just who he is. God is love, God is holy, God is uh, kind, God is gracious, God is merciful, he's slow to anger. He's a miracle, but he's a miracle working person. When he touches something, you know, he moves his little finger and the angels are knocked up against the wall. You know what I mean? That's who we're talking to. That's who we have a relationship with. That's who, when we pray, we're talking to that person. The same person that did all of these 125 things and remind you that's a partial list <laughs> i'm just saying you know what i'm saying it really is a small list a bible the bible itself is a very small testimony of all the things that god has been doing in the earth listen to me here here's something that the lord showed me he said while i'm sitting here listening to you devin and your prayers i'm also in china Helping a baby come back to life who has just died or is on the verge of death. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. You know, the Lord's like, while I'm also doing that thing, I'm also way over here in Europe trying to bring this person into the kingdom. I'm trying to slowly... Go I'm saying, and this is, and it's like, now multiply that by like 15 billion. And he's doing all 15 billion of those things all at the same time right now. Like literally right at this moment. God is the busiest person ever you'll ever meet. And at the same time, he will always have time to sit and chit chat with you. Because he's the Holy Spirit. He's God everywhere. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Spirit, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's able to hear everything. God is able to hear the footsteps of an ant as it's crawling, and he hears all their footsteps, every ant alive. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm just, I just really felt like God put this, this thing that I'm sharing with you, God just put that on me today after I made my first video, and he was like, this is this is who I am, Devin. This is you need to get you need you and your people <laughs> need to get a bigger vision. Why, why does God do that sometimes? He says, Your people. He said that to Moses sometimes. He said, Your people have gone astray. And Moses is like, Well, what, what you mean, my people? What do you mean, you people? <laughs> I never watched that movie. Sorry. I mean, just, just I just thought the commercial was funny. But you know what I'm saying? Like, that's God. God is just he knows the hairs on your head. He can count them. He knows the very number of every single hair on every single thing that has hair. And he knows the exact number of all of those hairs totaled up. Like that. Like quicker than that. You know what I'm saying? That is the God we are in relationship with when we pray and we talk. 
So when things don't go our way and they don't go according to our timing and we're still frustrated because the, the promise hasn't been fulfilled and we keep getting yet another prophecy that talks about things that are going to happen that haven't happened, we don't need to worry about it. Because that God, the miracle working God, who knows all things, he's got our back. And he sent Jesus to die for our sins, miracle that that is, and he was raised from the dead so that we ourselves could die to our sins and be raised to eternal life also. So don't be super concerned about these things of earth and how our earthly life is not working out and how we really wish it could be a certain way. Don't, don't be worried about that, you know, just, and I know, like I said this morning, you know, God's not going to, although you guys aren't going to see it until the evening, but whatever, God's not going to let our hearts languish in the grave of misery and grief. He's not going to do that. Joy comes in the morning, you know, and who knows that your joy, your specific joy won't come actually tomorrow morning. You know, I mean, joy comes in the morning is more of just like a time and a season thing. It's like you may endure weeping and mourning for a little while, but there's going to come a time where that will fade away. Just like just like the night be becomes morning. It's not night forever. There will be a morning at some point. You wake up and it's the light. It's a completely different there was darkness and now there's light. There's morning and I'm happy. There's joy. There's coming a day when your joy will come to you. Your manifestation of a promise comes to you because God is so amazing and so awesome to the degree that he just, he gives the promise in the first place. I mean, think about that. Just the giving of the promise is like a thank you. I don't have it yet. Okay, man, I'm frustrated beyond measure, but I'm all right. Because you are God. You're good. The miracle working God. The God who holds the winds in his hand and tells the ocean, stop here, go there, not that far. Okay, you're good. You know what I'm saying? That's who we have come in contact with, people. That's who we have relationship with. And we need to get a clue because the man just don't lie. And I know he's not a man. But he's not a God who lies. He will fulfill. So, hope that's been a blessing to you guys. And I uh, hope that's been like a brain magnifier or a God magnifier for you. And it has been for me when God's God just been having, he's just been sitting on me and been brooding on me ever since I made my last video. And so, uh, anyway, God bless you guys. And I will see you the next video. Bye.